yes, I have to do that. Hola, hey, welcome to another math video, my jungle friend. Yes, and who do we have as our feature animal of the day? It looks like my good buddy, the... Looks like he's blindfolded. I can't see. Oh, yes, you can. Here you go. It's a jaguar. Oh, my goodness, with green eyes. He's very cool. I like you, jaguar. Nice. We're going to keep you along. Sure beats that rhino we had the other day. Ooh, that rhino. I mean, no offense, just between you and me. He was really kind of getting on my nerves. <laughs> but, hey... We have a new lesson, it's lesson 4.4. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have a topic of multiplying using expanded form. Ooh, I love this. Yes, I do like this. It looks like we're gonna be using some area models. I really like that. Essential question, how can you, that's right, how can you use expanded form and place value to multiply a decimal and a whole number? Yes. I've wanted to know that, and we're going to learn that in this lesson. First, however, we have to unlock the problem. That's right. It says the length of a day is the amount of time it takes a planet to make a complete rotation on its axis. Okay. And rotate, spin means the same thing. On Jupiter, there are 9.8 Earth hours in a day. Wow. How many Earth hours are there in 46 days on Jupiter? Oh, this is pretty cool. And it says you can use a model and partial products to solve the problem. Cool. Well, let's first start off with, you know, understanding the problem, right? I mean, that's one of the things with math. I mean, some of us, when it comes to math, we're just like, whoo, love math. Like, well, like Mr. Wara, for example. But I know you guys can love math too, because with math, it's really all around us. And with this problem, when you think about it, we have something to relate it to. Like we know the Earth takes 24 hours, right? To make that complete rotation on its axis. And now we have Jupiter. And look at that, right, right away we can say, look, it's 9.8 Earth hours. That means that Jupiter is flying right it's cruising it's spinning so fast that after almost 10 hours it's already completed a day wow and that's about 10 if we round so you're really talking about it does it twice so that's pretty cool anyway but let's get to the problem here let's take a look at it, it says that we can use a model all right let's bring this down here first thing here it says you can use a model it says we can multiply the number of days okay and multiply it by the number of hours it takes uh, Jupiter to, to do that. And we want to know how many Earth hours are there in 46 days on Jupiter. So like we're taking, making copies of. Probably the first thing we do want to look at is a factor. Remind ourselves that we have two factors here. Okay, these two factors we're going to multiply. And it says that we're going to rewrite step one. I guess we should follow the steps here, Mr. Wara. Okay, imagine that. Yes, step one comes before step two. All right. Rewrite the factors in expanded form and label the model. When I think of expanded form, expanded is like, you know, to stretch it out, you know, like taffy. Yeah, I don't know why I thought of taffy, but it just sounded like a good idea. So 46, if you think about it, is really just 40, right, plus 6, and that's considered expanded form. Right, yay. Okay, now here we have a decimal. Let me look a little bit more difficult, but it's just a place value. We have nine, all right, and plus, and this is going to be plus eight tenths. We'll put the zero in front to avoid any confusion. And we'll come down and do step two then. Multiply to find the area of each section. Okay, the area of each section represents a partial product. So when they're talking about step two, we're talking about the model here. This is the area. This is called an area model. I don't know why they don't use that word, but that's what I call it, an area model. And it says do the find the area of each section. So if I were to take nine, and I'll put my little times here, times 40, all right, I can find out the area in this area model here, and that's going to be 360. Remember, that's like what we learned about just our simple facts is nine times four is 36. We have one more power of 10 there, so we can kind of add the zero on at the end. Now here we have 40 times 0.8. Uh, a little bit different here. When you think about this one, you can kind of think of it as well. We have 40 multiplied by 0.8. And because we have one, one power 10 here, and 
we do have a power of 10, it's 1 10, so it's almost like the opposite. So I'm going to let you know this is just 32. Now, but we can go ahead and figure this out. I guess if I were to multiply the algorithm, I would actually write the problem this way. I don't know if other people do this or not. This is what I do. I like that zero on the end because I can just drop the zero down. And then here we have our 32. So here's our two. We carry our three. Four times zero, of course, is zero. That's the zero property of multiplication. And then we have three. We just add that on. But remember, we have that one power of 10 in there. So if we were to move that decimal, which we would need to do, and then we put it back into the number, we end up with 32. So this is like an added power of 10 here. This is kind of like the opposite of a power of 10, I guess uh, one tenth of. So it kind of bounces out, brings it back to 32. All right, well, we'll keep going. Six times nine here is 54. Just multiply that nine and the six that match up. And of course, here I have six times 0.8. Well, six times eight would be 48, right? But we do have that one decimal place that's in there that needs to be taken out just like up here. So that's really going to be 4.8. Now, step three says add the partial products. All right, so adding the partial products means we're coming way over here. So let's go ahead and put our partial products in. We have 360, we have 54, we have 32, and we have, ooh, 4.8. I'm going to put my tenths. I need to make sure I line up my decimals. That's right, because I always say bring them on down, bring them on down. But, you know, I want to bring them on down, but I want my decimals in my line. You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you following me? Mate? I want my decimals in a line. I want them in a line. There we go. And I got a nice, pretty line. When my decimals are in a line, that makes things makes good things happen. Here I have my 8, and I bring my decimal right there. Now I'm adding up. I got 6 and 10. That's pretty simple. Just got 10. 0. I got to carry my 1 into the next because I'm renaming. Now I have 8. Looks like 14. 15. Voila. 450.8. Okay, now I come over here. It says those there are 450.8 Earth hours in 46 days on Jupiter. Cool. All right, let's move on. Now it says, what if? What if you want to find the number of Earth hours in 125 days on Jupiter? Well, up above, we had, what was it, like 46 days on Jupiter. Now we have 125. The number's larger. So, well, one thing we would need to, we need to increase it to three rows here. Where here we just have the two. So we'd have to have the 100, the 20, and the 5. And so that would have to be clear for the factor 125. This number here would stay the same because we know how many uh, hours, it, that how many hours uh, is equal to one day, like on Jupiter. So that would be it. So let's go ahead and write this down. Basic explaining how we would have that additional row. That's going to increase it to three rather than the two that we had. Again, these would be the labels for each one of them. All right. There we go. Moving on to the next page. Um, oh, no. Not you again. Ha, huh? you thought you got rid of me? Well, guess again. You know, Rhino, you are really, you know, I thought you were kind of cute, you know, but you know what? This is a little bit too much. I'm going to start to have some fun, okay? At your expense, because you won't leave. You know what? I'm going to give you a little bigote. There you go. See a little mustache there. Yeah, I'm going to mock you. Oh, are you still tired? Oh, so sorry. Yeah, and oh, really? They painted your nails red. I'm sorry to hear that. Why did they do that? I mean, you know, that just, uh, yeah, because you won't go away maybe. Maybe because you keep coming back and you're like, you hassle the teacher when they're trying to do a math video. Yeah. You know what, pal? It's time for you just to disappear. All right. Hasta la, ooh, what's this? Hasta la vista. Boom. Oh, no. There you go. God. Oh, look, he left his paint. Okay. All right. I know. Sure. <laughs> I know. This is kind of strange. I'm really, really losing it. What's going on here? Okay, Mr. War, I know you're really kind of losing it. Okay, let's just get through this video, huh? Like, alive. All right, we have another way. Yes, I like another way. It says use place value patterns. All right. Oh, cool, there's Mercury. Now, it takes Mercury 88 Earth days to complete an orbit around the sun. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so, you know, if you have, like, the sun here. Let's pretend that's the sun. Hello, Mr. Sun. So, it only takes Mercury 88 days to go around the sun. That's an orbit. Wow, Earth takes 360, well, 365 quarter days. 
And not even exactly that, but that's pretty close. Anyway, well, let's read the question. It says, a day on the planet Mercury lasts about 58.6 Earth days. How many Earth days are there in 14 days on Mercury? Pretty amazing. So again, we have a couple of factors. So this verse says, write the decimal factor as a whole number. Yeah. So you want me to do something here? Is that just a step? Oh, I see what they're doing. Coming over here. Step one. Okay. Write this number. All right. We multiply it by 10. Gives us 586. Okay. Cool. I could see that. Nice arrow. Very clear. Very understandable. Step two says multiply as with whole numbers. All right. So we're taking the six times four, which is 24. Four. Carry the two. They didn't put up there. Then we have what? 32 plus... 2 is 34, there's your 4, carry the 3. Then we have 20 plus 3 is 23. Hey, I agree. Now you got your placeholder in there because now we're getting ready to multiply from the tens column. So we have to make sure that our place value stays lined up. Now we have 6, 8, 5. That's pretty simple. We add. There you go. All right. Now it says step 3. Place the decimal point. Okay. The decimal product is, let's take a look. So we have, here we had to really divide, since multiplying by one-tenth is the same, okay, is dividing by ten. All right, it's kind of, I think, important to know because you're doing the reverse. Because I kind of always think about this dividing by ten, but multiply by one-tenth. So here, that's what we're going to need to do here. The decimal point is uh, one-tenth. So we need to write that down. So that would be 0 0.1 or... You could write it as a fraction. It means the same thing. All right. So we need to do that. And then so we can figure that out. So in this case, then, they put this back. See how they put that back? It's not 586. Now it's 58.6. So we actually multiplied by one-tenth. It's one-tenth. But our number down here is going to be uh, the same digits. But we're going to need to... Multiply, right? Yeah. Multiply this by 10, divide by 10, or multiply by 1 tenth means the same thing, which is what they have here. We get 820.4. We kind of think of it like what we did. You see, we multiplied by 10 here. Okay. So you have to remember that this was multiplied by 10. In order to get a correct number, though, we have to reverse that. So since we already multiplied by 10, we need to make sure that we multiply by one tenth and get that decimal both in the factor here and in the product. That's, I mean, there's different ways you can teach this, but this is how goal math is having you do it. So there are 820.4. So we'll write that down. Yes. All right. Moving on. Compare strategies. What if you rewrite the problem as 10 plus 4, or the sum of 10 plus 4, times 58 0.6 and use a distributive property to solve. Ooh, yeah. Explain how this is similar to your model using place value. All right. Well, let me take a look up here. How is that similar? Uh, I'm gonna have to look at that. You know what? It's similar because, in a way, um, when we did the area model, kind of what it's saying here, when we were similar to the model that when we were using, it's like, see, so when you multiply 58.6 by 4 and then 10, it's going to give you partial products that we have to add at the end. If you recall, that's what we did in that previous problem. So that's what I would say. Bring this down. So I'll go ahead and write this down. Let's do this one by hand. I'm going to just say, so when when you multiply, um, the number up there was 58.6, okay, by 4 and then 10, you will get like those partial products that we had, that's what they're called. We're gonna get those partial products to be added. Okay, remember those partial products are what you have under your home model. In fact, we have an area model here. These are called partial products in here, okay? Which brings us to the next problem anyway. There's our area model, let's just use a model. All right, let's go ahead and use this model. Here we have 52, okay? We'll use 52, let's use that for the rows here, all right, vertical. So if I put 50, because I'm going to write this as like an expanded form. So I have 50 plus 2. Okay, just so you know. And then over here, whoa, I have 3,500. So I'm going to need to break that apart. I'm going to call this guy, of course, 3 tenths. And then this one over here is going to be, that's right, 5 hundredths. 
all right and this model's not completely it's just it's not drawn to scale like what three tenths is that much it's just a model to show what these partial products will be well now we need to multiply 50 times 0.3 all right and let's just write the equation in here and that's going to equal well five we had this before like we had 50 this and there's like a power 10 here and there's one tenth here so if i were to actually just think of this as five times three i would get 15. you can always write it along the side here and we we did that before when you multiplied by 50. see we get 150 we have that one and then we end up with 15. all right and then over here because this is our 50 right here times five hundreds well that's going to equal this here would be 25 i'm going to put 25 but if we were multiplying that look at we'd have two decimal places in here so let me do it up here this will make more sense and then i'll put times 25 i know i'm doing times 50. okay what hold up all right you didn't see that okay <laughs> all right let's do it again so i have five hundreds now i'm going to go ahead and multiply that by, by 50. i'm going to throw my zero here 25 carry the 2, that's 0, so I end up with 2. I have two decimal places in the factor, so I'm needing to multiply 100 to get that out. Here I need to divide by 100, okay? Remember, that still means, or, or multiply by 1 hundredth, means the same thing. So I'd end up with 2.5 here. And then down here, I have 2 times 0 0.3. 2 times 0 0.3, right like that. Well, this would be 6, except, look, at we have one decimal place in the factor, so that means I'm going to have to do that. And if you multiply that, you will see. And then finally, we have 2 times uh, 5 hundredths. And then here's just going to be 10, right? Carry the 1. And then we have two decimal places. So we end up with, looks like 0.1. So here's going to be 2 times 5 hundredths is equal to 0.1. I can put the 0. Now I have my partial products. I have 15 plus 2.5 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1 okay what does that equal here i have 17 and a half so i'm gonna put 17.5 i have also 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 see that's 12 make sure my decimals are in a line put that up I end up with 18.2 yes all right that's the answer i got here use place value patterns do I want to just, okay, so I've took the decimal, I'm just going to put 918, right, times 16. That way I don't have to worry about the decimal right now. Well, that's 48, carry the 4, I have 6 and 4, that's 10. So I need to carry the 1, this is 54 plus 1 is 55. Placeholder, now I have 819, 819, because this is the identity property with 1, so of course that's going to equal the same. We have 886 and then 14. Now, of course, our answer is in 14,688 because remember we had this number as 9.18. So what do we need to do? Well, 9.18 times 16, okay, means that we need to, if this is being multiplied by 100 here, then we have to multiply by 100th. So if I had that number again, that means two decimal places and give me 146.8. 88, 8800. Okay? Yeah! Finally, we get to the end of the video, huh? Was it just me? It was such a long time. Actually, this video went pretty fast. My friends, you know, this is just so much fun. I mean, really? I, math is more fun than like a barrel of monkeys. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that little toy. There were little monkeys that they all hooked. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm a really old, it's probably a toy you've never really seen. Anyway. It is time to say hasta la vista, my friends. That's right. So, as always, live long and prosper.